The Red Raiders win an absolute thriller at the USA, coming back from 10 points down with seven minutes left to beat the TCU Horn Frogs by a score of 82 to 81. In today's video, we'll recap the game, talk about the standouts, and discuss what's next for Texas Tech men's basketball. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And before we get into today's video recap, a sincere thank you for 9,500 strong here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. Red Raider Nation has shown out each and every day here on the channel, and I am eternally grateful for you guys for just simply watching the videos every day and really interacting with the channel and making this a really fundamental and integral part of the Texas Tech media space. It really does mean the world to me. So thank you for that. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube by simply hitting that like button, subscribe button, and turning on that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball and football all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. One question before we get into today's recap video. One word to describe this Texas Tech win over TCU. I'll give mine a little bit later because we'll discuss the game, but I also want to talk about Texas Tech as a program right now and what they're doing and what I think it means for the long-term trajectory of this program with Grant McCaslin at the helm. But before we get into anything like that, let me know your one word to describe this Texas Tech men's basketball victory over TCU on the pinned comment down below. Wow. Whoa, what, what a game. What a game. An absolute thriller out at the USA. First and foremost, hell of a job, Red Raider Nation. Hell of a job. Each and every one of you at the USA last night had an impact on that game. That was one of the better crowds I can remember, and that's saying something from the standpoint of the USA, the crowd shows out damn near each and every game. That was one of the best ones I've seen, and it was needed for Texas Tech to beat the TCU Horn Frogs. Now, Texas Tech was led by Pop Isaacs in this one with 19 points, but not in the way you think. He was 11 of 12 from the free throw line and 11 for 11 after his first miss in the first half. Absolute ice water in Pop Isaacs veins against TCU. The Red Raiders didn't make any shots from deep really at all in this one. They were 6 of 22. But you could see the mindset change for Texas Tech in the second half with about seven minutes to go when they were down 10, where they said, all right, we're just going to be aggressive. We're going to force the issue. And it started with their two lead guards in Pop Isaacs and Joe Toussaint. They were absolutely sensational and integral to Texas Tech winning this game against TCU. Joe and Pop combined for 11 assists, only three turnovers. The one that really stands out to me was the Pop Isaacs back cut for the and one. Joe Toussaint was stuck in the lane. He he was kind of just done at that point. It was either going to be, I'm going to jack up a shot or somebody has to cut to the basket. And Pop Isaacs had Micah Peavy, one of the best defenders in the Big 12 and one of the better defenders in all of college basketball on him. Micah Peavy won on the initial move, if you go back and watch it, that Pop Isaacs tried to make. Pop Isaacs didn't get deterred. He didn't get frustrated. Instead, he made a second move. Micah Peavy got beat. Pop Isaacs takes a great Joe Toussaint bounce pass to the rim, lays it up for the and one, and the momentum starts to change drastically for the Red Raiders right there. Also, the pass that Pop Isaacs had in transition to Darion Williams to tie the game at 71 was arguably the best pass I've seen from a Texas Tech men's basketball player in the past half decade. It was seriously that great. Considering the circumstances and all you had to fight back from if you're Texas Tech, remember, down 10 with seven minutes to go, that pass from Pop Isaacs in transition, the wraparound to a cutting Darion Williams for the slam right there to get it to 71 even, just chef's kiss by Pop. They were sensational, Joe and Pop was, all night long. Now, Kyron Lindsey, just huge for Texas Tech with no war in Washington. Him and Robert Jennings once again got a sizable workload in this one, but Kyron Lindsay was the one that stepped up for Texas Tech. 8.7 rebounds, six defensive rebounds. Grant McCaslin talked about how critical that was for Texas Tech in terms of just getting the ball back, securing it, right? Oh, and by the way, in this game, he also had two steals and two blocks. He showed his potential 
tonight against a very good TCU team. And now he's going to have a chance to play more minutes for Texas Tech moving forward and be probably an integral part of that rotation. And now you're starting to feel a little bit better if you're a Texas Tech fan in the sense of, okay, is there a difference with no Warren Washington on the floor? Let's be real. Yes. But the gap is shrinking a little bit in terms of what Robert Jennings and now Kyron Lindsay are doing on the floor. That is a good, good development for Texas Tech men's basketball. Now, the Red Raiders lost the rebounding battle. Let's, let's talk about that. They lost it by 13. Um, however, Texas Tech had 13 points off of TCU turnovers compared to the Horn Frogs' seven points off of nine Texas Tech turnovers. That was the difference in the game, I thought, in terms of Texas Tech capitalized on the opportunities that TCU gave them. TCU did not capitalize on the opportunities that Texas Tech gave them in terms of turnovers. Texas Tech had 10 in this game. That was the big difference. This is really what it comes down to for me. Simple and plain, Texas Tech just finds a way to win, period. It, it's it's not pretty all the time. You get frustrated. It may take a year or two off of your life in terms of the heart conditions you may develop watching the games. But Texas Tech, simple and plain, wins basketball games, period. That's what they do, and Grant McCaslin has proven that time and time again, wherever the hell he's coaching. doesn't matter. Arkansas State, North Texas, um, the JUCO level, it doesn't matter. The man finds a way to win basketball games, and Texas Tech did that against TCU on Tuesday night by a score of 82-81. to 81. Just an absolute thriller. I'm going to need y'all to like the video if y'all are excited about Texas Tech men's basketball, all but securing their spot, their spot in March Madness, excuse me. They're in, baby. They're back. I know the announcer last night said Texas Tech hasn't made the tournament in four years. Listen, I understand announcers misspeak sometimes, but got to have some fun with it as well. I think that streak, quote unquote, that he mentioned that was false is over. Texas Tech will be back in the NCAA tournament this year. You can count on that. If you're excited about that, simply like the video. All right. I, I also want to talk about this. The toughest team wins. That's the mantra. The motto for Texas Tech men's basketball this season. Was Texas Tech perfect against TCU? Hell no. Far, far from it. In fact, I even went on Twitter spaces last night and said, I don't know how the hell they won this game. Um, and I think a lot of people agree in that regard. Two are your three best shooters because Kerwin Walton is your best shooter. He's arguably the best shooter in all of college basketball. But Pop Isaacs and Chance McMillan, hear this stat out for me, have shot in their last three games a combined south of 20% from three. What did they do instead? Mainly Pop Isaacs here. Chance McMillan made a three. He was the only one to make it out of Pop and himself in that regard against TCU out in the 806. They started to attack the TCU defense. And I think that's a testament to what Texas Tech has as a team, where this is a great sign that they are a great team, in fact, in the sense that they're willing to do the small things and make adjustments and put their egos to the side and really do what's best for the team, regardless of how they are doing as an individual. I talked about it last night on the Twitter spaces as well, and you can follow me at RCMB323 over there on Twitter for instant reaction as soon as the game goes final. We got over 250 Red Raiders each and every night after each and every basketball game talking and listening to what happened in the game and interacting with each other. It's honestly a really cool, almost therapeutic type session and just really party when it all comes down to it. So be sure to check that out. But Texas Tech just does the small things as a collective whole better than a lot of teams in the country. And when that happens, you are going to win a majority of your basketball games. And that's what Texas Tech is doing. Now, Let's get real. The, the rebounding aspect is an issue. Grant McCaslin will be the first one to tell you that. But each and every night, this team simply doesn't quit at all. And that will eventually show its head in terms of the results at the end of the game. And in this case, it's not its ugly head. It's its beautiful head if you're a part of Red Raider Nation in terms of Texas Tech winning this game 82 to 81. And it's not just like this for the TCU game. They do this in other ways as well. I remember the Kansas State game. Didn't have a good offensive game. They did the little things well. UCF didn't have a good game. They did the little things well. When Texas Tech wins basketball games, they do the little things really, really well at an elite level as a team. Not individually, but as a team. 
And that's the thing that really just gets me excited about Texas Tech, not only for this season, but in the future, because that isn't just a team thing. Obviously, the team has to buy in and the players are the ones making the results on the court. They deserve a ton of credit. That's a culture thing. That starts at Grant McCaslin's level and trickles down that coaching staff into the players. This is a cultural shift that Texas Tech has not had in terms of team basketball at this level in a long time. And it's great to see. I'll, I'll just say this. I don't know what the rest of the season holds for Texas Tech men's basketball, and neither do you. Nobody does. But I'm sure as hell going to enjoy watching and talking about them each and every day. This is one of the more fun teams to watch, um, in my opinion. Just, just so much fun to watch each and every night. One more time before we get out of here, one word to describe this Texas Tech victory over TCU. Mine, it's grit. That was a gritty-ass win for Texas Tech. I thought they did a phenomenal job um, with the little things that I just talked about. Now, next up for the Red Raiders, they'll be in Orlando. No, not for Disney World, or is it land? No, land is in California. Disney World or Universal, they'll be facing off against the Knights of UCF on Saturday afternoon. Tip-off is scheduled for 3 p.m. Central Time on ESPN+. I am RC Maxfield reminding you one more time, if you want to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube, over 9,500 strong right here for daily updates on Texas Tech men's basketball, football, and everything in between. We've got you covered right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.